Buenas tardes. Good uh, evening, afternoon. Welcome to the Ramon Arenas Foundation. On their behalf, I want to thank you for being here. My name is Manuel Aguilar, and I'm a member of the Scientific Committee of the Ramon Arenas Foundation. I'm an academician of the Royal Academy of Sciences and emeritus researcher at the CNAT. My speciality is experimental physics into high energies or uh, elementary particles. And since 1967, my research career has been associated with the CERN, which is the European Organization for Nuclear Research in Geneva, where I did my PhD thesis. And I was a member of the Spanish delegation at the CERN Council from 1996 to 2008, and I was vice president of the council during the period going from 2004 to 2007. I think that it is very relevant to point out here today that the CERN is very well loved by the director of the uh, Ramon Areces Foundation, Mr. Raimundo Fernandez y Torra, who's with us today. Since 1996 until 1999, he was ambassador and permanent representative at the UN office and other international agencies in Geneva, and particularly at the CERN. And he was the Spanish delegate at the uh, board of directors of the CERN. And I was lucky enough as a member of the Spanish delegation to work with Mr. Raimundo, and I have an excellent memory of those years. Uh, his interest, his devotion, dedication, his savoir-faire helped us and helped helped us to put Spain in the position that the quality and size of the Spanish scientific community and our important contributions to the budgets of the agency merited. The CERN is the largest laboratory in the world devoted to basic research and specifically high energy physics or particle, element, elementary physical, elemental particle uh, physics. It was founded in 1954 and has 23 member states today, including Spain. Uh, Spain entered in 1961, abandoned the organization in 1969, went back to it, joined again in 1983. There are 10 member states that are associated member states. 32 are going to become member states, and nine countries and organizations in the Statute of Observers. To give you an idea of the magnitude of the CERN, the size and extent of it, it currently has a budget, budget of about 1.4 billion francs, and, and Spain is the fifth country to contribute with 7.5%. The personnel, the staff at the CERN is about 2,670 people, and currently there are there's a number of users from member states and other regions totaling in excess of 12,000 people. Throughout its almost 70 years of history, the CERN has delved into the knowledge of the intimate uh, structure of matter at a fundamental level and has promoted technological development that has been transferred into other scientific disciplines and production sectors of society. It has trained generations of physicists, engineers, and technology te uh, technicians, and has promoted collaboration through science and technology between regions and countries uh, with um, different idiosyncrasies. At scientific and technological level, I could talk about many very significant contributions, but I will only mention three that have led to the concession of the Nobel Prize for Physics. The first one was the discovery of the Z0 uh, vectorial uh, boson, bosons in 1983. That was the f Nobel Prize for Physics for Carlo Rubia and uh, van der Meer. The second great success was the invention of the viridium chambers and multi-fiber cha chambers by George Sharpak, who was given the Nobel Prize for Physics in 1992. And finally, the discovery of the uh, Higgs boson uh, 10 years ago at the CERN, and which led to Francois Englert and Peter Higgs 
Well, they were given the uh, Nobel Prize for Physics in 2013 for that discovery. And that latest or last uh, discovery is the topic of this symposium organized by the, by the Foundation to commemorate the 10th anniversary of the discovery of, Bo of the Boson Higgs, of the Higgs boson. This, is, this meeting is set up in collaboration with the Royal Academy of Sciences, the CERN, the Univer Autonomous University of Madrid, Oxford University and the CMAT. And I want to thank all the speakers and the people that have helped me to organize this for their availability and their collaboration with the foundation, the Arethes Foundation, to explain the complex process that led to the discovery of the Higgs boson. We have uh, divided up this meeting into two scientific sessions. The first one is the one that we're going to have this afternoon, today, which will be on the on the Higgs boson within the context of the standard model, the relevance of its of searching for it for more than 50 years after its theoretical prediction in 1964, and then we will have the genesis of the design project, approval and construction of the LHC, the Large Hadron Collider, and the process of construction and its colossal technological uh, challenges. To address these topics, we have the privilege of having here this afternoon Professor Maria Jose Herrero, from the uh, Autonomous University of Madrid, Universidad Autónoma de Madrid, and professors Christopher Lewin Smith you know, from the University of, of Oxford, and Professor Lynn Evans from the CERN Imperial College London. And unfortunately, due to bureaucratic problems that had nothing to do with them, Professor Lewin Lulin Smith couldn't come to Madrid and he is going to connect uh, online. There'll be another session on Thursday next week and when that time, when the time comes I will explain what the contents will be. And now as an advance uh, overview of uh, this session I'm going to show you a brief film uh, regarding the discovery 10 years ago of the Higgs boson. I will only, actually not a film, not a video, only photos, pictures, because if I start showing films, um, it might be too complex. The CERN 1954, 2022, from 12 member states up to 23 in the current, in the current at uh, the present time. The CERN is the most important uh, complex of accelerators in the world. I'm not going to talk about this because this will be uh, dealt with by Professor Lynn Evans. The experiments um, uh, take place in four points, four experimental areas. The uh, accelerator in a tunnel, 27 kilometer subterranean tunnel, these are on the picture, collaborations uh, by the CMS and ATLAS. They're responsible for the discovery of the Higgs boson on the left. We see the frontal and uh, cross-section views of the detector, about 12,000 tons, and the ATLAS the same. You see the front view and the cross-section of, uh, of, the, of the huge uh, apparatus. These are some of the collaborations. Every, we've got 3,000, 4,000 people, including technicians, engineers, scientists. This is a picture of uh, taken at the CERN on the 4th of July 2012, where the discovery of the Higgs boson was uh, announced. At the bottom, we see, at the bottom, we see the prize winners, Nobel Prize winners. Nobel Prize for Physics, Peter Higgs, Francois Angel, and the director of the CERN at the time, Professor Hoyer. And as I said, uh, 
It was. It took 48 years to discover the particle that was involved in these three uh, seminal papers produced in 1964. In fact, the first of the three papers, three articles, was published in June and accepted, was accepted for publication in June 1964, some months before the article written by Professor Peter Higgs. I will not explain why, in spite of that, everybody talks about the Higgs boson and not the Engler boson. But that, that's another story uh, for, for another day. But on the 4th of June, everybody got quite emotional at the, at the CERN. And here we see the stars of the day. We see from left to right Chris Lewin, Lewin Smith. Uh, next to him on the right is Her Herwig Schopper, director of the CERN and responsible of the lead project, Luciano Mariani, director general, and Robert Emal. Director, previous, uh, the, the director general before Professor Hoyer. And there were huge screens all over the CERN and there was massive attendance. People were absolutely enthusiastic. And um, the discovery of the Higgs boson took place in 20, it was the discovery of the year 2012, and Science published a special monograph, special issue, on the initial observations of this. And in Spain, we had the uh, chance to uh, commemorate this discovery at, in October 2013, when the Prince of Asturias Award for Scientific and Technical Research was uh, given. Here you see the Nobel Prizes, Bertolucci and Hayer, and really the events academically were very interesting. They were organized by the University of Oviedo in Asturias. And this is when the prizes were, ha were, were the uh, award-giving ceremony on the 25th of October. And as you know, the, in, in 2013, the Nobel Prize for Physics was given to Peter Higgs and Francois Angler, and it was mentioned in the, uh, in the text uh, that was published. There was mention of how important this discovery was for ATLAS and CMS experiments at the LHC accelerator at the CERN. And I, not long after that, after that discovery, I could not resist the invitation that I was sent by the Ramon, the foundation's president, Raimundo Perez Hernandez, to give a, le a lecture here in this room. I won't tell you about it, but I will mention, I'll show you a, a few slides, pictures, uh, where I can be seen 10 years younger Raimundo is also 10 years younger, and the president of the uh, scientific committee, Federico Mayor Zaragoza, it was quite a successful lecture. This meeting or symposium, as we call it, has two, set, two, two parts. This is part one, which is beginning now, with professors Maria Jose Herrero, uh, Christopher Llewellyn Smith, and Lynn Evans. And as the director, has asked me not to go into too much detail with the CVs of these people. I would just say that Maria Jose Herrero is an expert, great expert on theoretical work associated with the Higgs boson in the context of the standard model and its potential exp extensions. She has a brilliant career behind her. She's been uh, doing different residencies in places like the Lawrence Berkeley Laboratory in California, the, uh, the CERN at Stanford, Berkeley. She's one of the founders of the Theoretical Physics uh, Institute. She was main researcher on many, many projects, and she has 
been also a member of many, many scientific committees and contributed very frequently to uh, science. Unfortunately, Sir Christopher Llewellyn Smith is not with us in Madrid today, but he took part very notably in the discussions on the scientific potential of the LHC after it was conceived. He presented the scientific case for the construction of the LHC to the Con Council of the CERN, and he was Director General of the CERN during the years when the project was being launched. His career is extraordinary and brilliant, not just as a theoretical physicist of elemental particles, but also uh, in areas that have to do with energy. And he's participated in many, many agencies, national and international agencies, uh, including the scientific committee that uh, advised the prime minister of the UK. He was president of the Secret Sicrotron in the Middle East, his career is truly brilliant. And the third speaker is Professor, in my opinion, is the most brilliant researcher. He began building accelerators in 1969, particle accelerators, the year when innovative results were obtained in the study of the deeply inelastic dissemination at the Stanford Accelerator, Linear Accelerator, which led to a whole new development in the world of particle physics, which became more, com more complex after the Higgs boson was discovered. He's worked on all the big installations that allowed to develop the standard model, including the synchrotron at the CERN, the SPS at the CERN, the thematron, the, the, and many other uh, um, machines at the CERN, where he, for 14 years almost, has uh, been responsible for the design and construction of many of these elements. Two of these people can be seen here, Christopher Llewellyn Smith, General, Director General of the CERN between 1994 and 1998, and Lynn Evans, as I've said, leader of the, projector, the project of construction of the LHC from, 1990, from the mid-90s to 2008. And those who finished up the work were Rolf Hoyer, who was general director of the CERN between 2009 and 15, and Steve Myers, LHC project leader from 2009 to 2014. He uh, was responsible, he was in charge when the LHC was started up. On the 12th of May, Thursday next week, we'll have another session where I w we will really explain how the Higgs boson was discovered, what the horizon of particle physics is, and what the future of this scientific discipline is uh, from the perspective of the CERN. Thank you very much.